Now, before we start, I wanted to take the time to say that all money made from this video will be donated to medgift.com, a charity DM helped create when she was going through her battle with ovarian cancer. I will also be donating $100 of my own money to the National Ovarian Cancer Coalition. I wanted to say thank you because just clicking on this video and watching is giving back to those in need. And if you would like to make your own personal donation to either one of the charities I just mentioned, there are links in the description below. Thank you again, and on to the video. Danielle Michelle Brown was born on June 12, 1980 in Germany. When DM was growing up, her family moved constantly due to her father being in the army. She would go on to get her education at the University of Florida State, where she studied communications and journalism. In 2006, DM made her MTV debut on the 12th season of the Real World slash Road Rules Challenge called Fresh Meat. I know that I'll be able to like go over that hurdle. Like I really feel like I'm gonna do awesome. She was the fifth woman pick, ninth overall by Derek Kaczynski, who was in his fourth challenge season. In terms of gameplay, early on DM and Derek worked well with each other, but they mostly stayed in the middle of the pack when it came to the competition. They did fine in the challenges, but with everyone worried about real world Austin's numbers and the bigger personalities, DM and Derek laid low. They made alliances with Darrell and Theo, which worked out for them to make it far into the game. DM and Derek made a great duo. They trusted each other in the game right from the beginning. It's phenomenal that I have a partner to rely on and one person to trust, and that's DM. In episode three, DM tells Derek that she has been diagnosed with having ovarian cancer before coming on to do the challenge season. I have ovarian cancer. I've been through two treatments, one the day before I got here. I'm on the lower, lighter dose right now, and when I get back is when I go like the higher dose and like, you know, I'll lose my hair and all that. DM says that she will fight her hardest because after this season, she will have another big battle to go through. I want to really be able to um, do everything physical now because I'm not sure when I'm going to be able to do anything physical again. And fight she did. When the game came down to the wire, DM and Derek went on a winning streak. In episode 11, they won the Batten Down the Hatches Daily Challenge where they threw in Shane and Lynette. Then in episode 12, they won the Jump Down Under, Daily challenge to lock in the matchup of Shane and Lynette going up against Wes and Casey for Exile. Once again, Derek and Dia, first place. We could not have won two challenges at a better time. And in episode 13, they won their third daily challenge in a row called Deep Blue, where with five teams left in the game, they made a big move to send in Theo and Shonda. Total shocker, honestly. Derek and I are just, we're just gonna take care of each other. You know, I weren't gonna send each other home. This is the last thing I was expecting. During the game, DM, Derek, Shonda, Theo, and Aviv and Darrell have been working with each other in an alliance, but with the finals so close, the only teams left in the game with multiple daily wins were Derek and DM and Theo and Shonda. Tina, Kenny, and Wes and Casey had made an alliance of survival with each other and they took their chance to take down the trio's numbers. It's a big shocker. This is really bad because Derek and Darrell are huge friends. Darrell and Aviv won the next daily to exempt themselves from exile and they sent in Kenny and Tina against Theo and Shonda. Tina and Kenny won back into the game, then won the next daily challenge to pit friends of DM and Derek and Darrell and Aviv against each other in the final exile before the finals. It's Derek versus Darrell. DM was pissed and let Tina know it. First off, like, how did you even get here? By the way, how did we get yeah, here? Yeah, basically, how did you get here? Tina, you, you can take your little anorexic ass out Excuse of my face. Excuse me. Both pairs in the exile struggled, but Darrell and Aviv were able to pull out the win. It was bittersweet for Darrell and Aviv to win against their friends and alliance members, and it was heartbreaking to see DM and Derek be sent home after playing a fantastic game. Reality is now going to set in and the reality isn't fun. Because home is not fun and I don't want to start. The day I get back, I had to do the stupid treatments and I don't want to do them. This experience let me be normal for five extra weeks. And I'm really, really grateful for that. DM would leave the season and go home and start her treatments. But she would be back in season 13, The Duel, where she let everyone know that she was in remission. When I was on fresh meat, I was diagnosed with ovarian cancer and I'm in remission now. DM came onto the season to have a good time and win, but something she wasn't looking for, but found, was love. Hello, ladies. This is the season where DM and CT met, their feelings for each other just flourished and just completely took over the screen. 
DM on the season was in a very vulnerable spot in her life with coming off of treatments and her hair was growing back. She didn't feel like her beautiful self during this time. But getting the attention of a big muscular man with a lion's mane of hair made her feel special. One of the most powerful and inspirational moments in challenge history came in episode 2 where the challengers had to play the ring toss daily challenge. It was a sabotage mission where competitors had to grab rings in a mud pit. Diem was nervous because she couldn't compete with her wig on. It's the first time anyone's ever seen me without it, so like, I'm just being stupid. Oh, I do not want to cry on this one. Diem mentions that at the time, only three people have seen her without her wig and she now had to be without it in front of 18 other competitors, the crew, and forever it will be on television and on streaming services. To help DM feel more comfortable, the women in the competition donned swim caps, and then before TJ blew the horn for the women's heat to start, she got some encouraging words from her ex-partner Derek. And then I hear Derek is like, gee, you look good! Makes me feel nice. DM came out fierce. She won safety and got a major confidence boost in the game. In episode 9, it was DM's birthday and she was able to win the prize in the pole dance daily challenge. And in episode 11, we see CT and DM's very first kiss. It was definitely number one ever best kiss in the world. <laughs> Both DM and CT were making it far into the game. It felt like the finals were destined for them. However, in episode 14, the contestants played the Around the Block Daily, where DM did fantastic in round one. After winning round one, Anissa had told DM that she wanted DM to win and she had nothing to worry about. She would not pick her to go up in elimination against. This relaxed DM going into the final round where she was going up against Jody. This definitely affected her run as DM wasn't doing nearly as well as she did in round one. Jody ended up winning where Anissa was sent into the elimination and she had to pick between Svetlana and DM and she decided to go with DM. DM was flabbergasted. Although you said you went up there, but that's cool. Girl, because I thought you were going to You can't change, change but you can't like, change you what you're going to say. Face. That's your word. Like you say, boom, I'm not going to pick you. This was like deja vu from last season. DM thinks she's safe and then is sent into the elimination late in the game to possibly be sent home. The thing is, is that Anissa and Svetlana were like best friends on the season, so she was never going to pick Svetlana to go up against in an elimination. Anissa said that she really wanted DM to win and that's why she said that she had nothing to worry about. But really Anissa shouldn't have said anything at all because that really threw off DM's game. DM and Anissa were going to face off in the elimination, I can. 100. 150. 150? Do it. Where DM just couldn't lift 150 coffee bags and she was leaving the game. And I said to <laughs> I think DM was heartbroken to be leaving the game again right before the finals, but I think she was most sad to be leaving CT. Despite the loss though, DM seemed to have gained so much confidence and love for herself over the season. CT has really given me the confidence and the push that I needed to realize it's, I don't need to be shamed or scared. I feel so happy and so lucky and so blessed. Are you kidding me? I got to do everything I ever wanted to do and finally feel okay with being me. DM took the next season off, but was back for Gauntlet 3, where she was a part of the dominant vets team. Coming onto the season, DM and CT were officially a couple. We're still, we're still together. I'm really happy and lucky that we're on the same team. CT was more loose with his drinking, where early on, DM and CT had their fights and frustrations with each other. Calm down, you're talking No, to me. You're talking to me. Can you calm yeah, I'm down? talking to you. Someone I've been protecting for what? How long now? When do I get mine? CT was getting drunk, belligerent, and being rude to especially the women on the vet's team. And it was rubbing not only DM the wrong way, but everyone on their team to where they would voice their frustrations at DM. He's drunk. As I mentioned, the vets team was dominant, winning 11 out of 16 daily challenges, and DM was never in any danger of being eliminated. Decided to protect DM. Even with the men and Evelyn on the vets team talking about trimming the fat, 
Diem was never in the line of fire. And with that, Diem was able to make her first finals appearance in her challenge career. This was a tough finals for the vets as they were having a lot to overcome, especially Big Easy having to be taken to the hospital, but they would push forward. Even being a man down, they would continue running the race and it looked as though they finished first. However, the rule stated everyone had to cross the finish line. Big Easy went to the hospital in the middle of the finals, thus the vets lost. DM would take the next season off, which is the island, thank goodness. During the off season, DM had broken up with CT. She wanted to focus on her career and said that maybe in the future they can talk about being together again. CT was going through a lot in his life at this point. Between the breakup with DM and his brother being murdered, he was in a very, very dark point where everything was just building up and it led to an explosive episode one on season 17, The Duel 2. It was Kimberly's birthday and everyone was dressed up for the party. CT had been drinking, as had everyone else. In the middle of the party, CT and Javon hooked up. The news spread like wildfire in the house where DM was told by Katie and then Adam talked to DM as well. CT saw Adam talking to DM and felt that Adam was trying to throw him under the bus. Now looking back on CT and Adam's friendship, quote unquote friendship, they had very tumultuous feelings towards each other dating back to their real world season. Adam and CT had one of the biggest, ugliest and scariest fights in challenge history resulting in both men being sent home night one. You, you kidding me? Yeah. I will smash his head and eat it. DM was very upset. She felt it was because of her that CT blew up on Adam and she wanted to do what she could to help the situation. But everyone held her back. CT saw Adam and I talking. And I know that it's my fault that Adam's hurt. And CT had a few choice words for DM before he left. It's not like it's five years later. Career first. Good luck with it. DM would stay in the game and played well. She did a good job in the challenges, but never won any. Her social game was what helped her stay out of the eliminations. That is until episode eight, when Jen was heading into the elimination and Jen decided to pick DM on the basis that Rachel told her, don't go with emotional feelings, go with who you think you can beat. And Jen picked DM thinking that she could beat her in any of the eliminations. But DM had a different plan altogether as she ended up winning against Jen in the pushover elimination. I feel good now that I've been in a duel. Everyone comes on to me and says that they had no idea I had that in me. Again, DM was so close to the finals, but in a surprise vote, she was voted in by Brittany, Anissa, and Rachel to be sent into the final elimination before the finals. DM picked Brittany to face off against in the pushover elimination. Now, despite Brittany being a rookie and DM having experience in this particular elimination, DM lost a heartbreaker two to one, where in the last round, DM's foot slipped off the side and touched the ground. That I can win this final. I can win. I can win it. And it was just taken away in two seconds. No fear though, DM would be back for the next season, season 18, The Ruins, where she was looked at as the leader of the women's side for the Challengers team. In episode one, DM was in the Challengers inner circle. When the Challengers lost, Tanya picked DM to face off against in the elimination. Tanya wanted to prove to her team, the champions, that she was a strong competitor. So she picked DM to prove a point. Either Tanya would lose to a tough competitor or win against one. Tanya came in with fire and tenacity as she won against DM in the shoots and ladders elimination, handing DM her worst finish in her challenge career. DM would go on to take the next three seasons off, and from 2009 until her return to the challenge in season 22, she put all of herself into her career as an entertainment reporter and worked for the Associated Press, Sky Living, and FoxNews.com. Hey, just Sky Living, LA Girl DM here at the Tree of Life premiere, getting ready to interview Brad Pitt. She was interviewing A-list celebrities like Sir Anthony Hopkins, Zac Efron, and Miley Cyrus to working the red carpet at the Oscars and the VMAs. She returned in season 22 called Battle of the Exes, where she would be partnered up with her ex, CT. They mentioned in their intros that they hadn't spoken to each other since that night of the Duel 2 fight. We do not talk. I don't know if you're mad at me. We are not Facebook friends. I don't know if we're gonna get along. Nothing. During the season, they had their struggles early on. They would get on each other's nerves and not work well with each other. 
grab my vest. <laughs> if you piss me off, I'm not gonna do anything. Late in the game, when the game was getting down to the wire, CT and DM started to click as a partnership. They would win into the power couple position in the final two episodes to lock themselves into the finals and to keep themselves out of the elimination for the whole season. DM and CT had to make a tough decision to make after they won the Race to the Altar daily. With Ty and Emily coming in last place and heading straight into the finals, CT mentioned that maybe they should send in Bananas and Camilla who had won three daily challenges on the season, but DM pushed for Paula and Dunbar, both of whom are recent winners at this point, with Dunbar winning in season 20 Cutthroat and Paula winning in the previous season, season 21 Rivals. Once CT and DM won the final daily challenge, Feel the Burn, they were able to pit the teams of Bananas Camilla against Mark and Robin, where Bananas and Camilla were able to win in the X battle to make the finals. CT and DM were a team on a mission in the finals, DM was the Energizer Bunny, where she was not going to let anything stop her, unless it was her partner that is. CT was dying up on that mountain. The altitude was wreaking havoc on his body. With having to stop so much on their journey, Bananas and Camilla were able to pass CT and DM, taking first place overall, where CT and DM came in second place. CT and DM, 100,000 bucks. Nice work, you guys. DM always kept a positive and optimistic outlook, saying that CT had helped her so much throughout her life and she wanted to help him through this struggle that he was having up on this mountain. CT has helped me through so many obstacles in life and all I want to do is help him through this one. I'm sure it felt like an accomplishment, but coming up short yet again to being crowned a champion has to be tough. I think coming in second could feel tougher to swallow than just missing out on the finals altogether. Although the prize money helps a little bit, I'm sure. DM would take the next season off, and during that time off, in early 2012, DM was diagnosed with ovarian cancer for a second time. Doctors had told her that she wouldn't see the next year, but DM was a fighter, and she wouldn't let those words bring her down or stop her from living her life. Getting ovarian cancer again? I was told I wasn't gonna see the next year. But you realize very quickly that if you don't let things crush you, you become stronger. In June 2012, DM started writing a weekly blog for People.com as their health and women's issue contributor. She wrote about her experiences going through her treatments, her mental state, coping, and really whatever she wanted to write about. She was incredibly honest, raw, and vulnerable in these articles. She talked about the process of delaying her surgery and treatments to harvest and freeze her eggs for a future family. She went into detail about chemo cocktails, side effects, and her feelings about losing her hair. She talks about her state of her mental health as she's going through her treatments and also coping with her depression. It's remarkable how candid DM is in these articles and she puts herself out there to help anyone else who is going through the same thing, to help them know they aren't alone. That's the exact line of thought that helped create her charity, MedGift.com. It's a charity that provides a place to create a support page to those experiencing health-related hardships or needs. It connects those who want to help with those that need help. In February of 2013, DM wrote a blog post stating that she got the call from her doctor that she was cancer-free. That was outstanding news for DM, the warrior who had beaten cancer for the second time. And about two weeks later, she wrote a blog post saying that she was going to take some time off from posting to people.com. That was so she could be on the 24th season of the challenge, Rivals 2, where she was paired up with Anissa. CT and DM were reunited back on a challenge season together again. And with the surrounding circumstances, it felt like we were transported back to season 13, The Duel, where in episode one, DM and CT find themselves in the pool DM is nervous about taking her wig off, and CT the Casanova pulls the smooth move to take her wig off to plant a kiss on her. On the season, Anissa and DM never won a daily challenge for safety, but they did come in first place and scored $1,000 for winning the Blind Leading the Blind daily challenge. However, the season wasn't all rainbows and sunshine. Although it had seemed that CT and DM had rekindled some feelings for one another, the rest of the competitors in the house were looking at CT very skeptically on how he was treating DM. He makes me feel very good. He doesn't let everyone know. If someone's playing with your emotions for a game like that, that's awful. Nobody trusts him, dude. 
Because of the format of the season where the women would vote in the men to go into the elimination and vice versa, everyone thought that CT was playing all the women to save himself from going into an elimination on the season. The edit was tough to watch because CT had hooked up with Anastasia on night one and then completely lied about hooking up with her to the rest of the house to where Anastasia was physically punching and kicking CT before she was eliminated from the game. This is the first time I lost a fight in a challenge and I didn't think it was gonna happen like this. <laughs> People would point out to DM that CT seemed to be more affectionate towards her when it was a guy's day. He's been kissing you and when's the last time he kissed you? It was before the last guy's boat and he hasn't since. And the icing on the cake came way late in the season where DM and Anissa came last place going into the last elimination on the season. DM was nervous and she wanted the help from the team that she deemed her best friends in the game, which was CT and Wes. Yet, once they got back to the house, it was radio silent from both of them. DM had to pull Wes and CT to have a chat about the upcoming vote. The thing is that during the season, DM had told CT and Wes that if she ever went into elimination, she wanted to go up against the quote unquote tougher team. In her mind, she thought the tougher team was Cook and Kara. However, Cook and Kara were safe because they won the previous daily challenge. So the two options were between Paula and Emily who were a juggernaut on the season or Camilla and Jemmy. CT had no empathy or showed no sympathy towards DM in this moment. I don't care if DM's upset. I don't know what she's really upset about. You're going in anyway and you really don't have a choice. Like we can't do everything for you. And it showed when it came down to the vote when Wes and CT voted in Emily and Paula. However, the other two teams of Bananas Frank and Jordan and Marlon voted in Camilla and Jemmy. On that night, a big fight happened between DM, Camilla, and Jemmy, which led to the whole house against DM. You're a fake what? ass bitch. You I know it. Half of these people know you it. Do I was right there. Oh there. my yeah. god. Yes, walk you walk away, honey. She felt ganged up on and she felt used, especially by CT. I'm not okay. I feel used and manipulated. <laughs> like it hurts in a very deep level. Like DM and Anissa faced off against Camilla and Jemmy in the Hang by a Thread elimination, which they lost. It was a tough moment for both Anissa and DM. DM would not come back for season 25 free agents, but she would return for season 26 Battle of the Exes 2, where DM was paired up with CT for a second go around in an Exes format. However, this time CT looked to be much more comforting and a lot more considerate as a partner and a friend. After everything she's been through, I really feel like DM deserves to win. And this is DM's, DM's game. Like, however she wants to play it, whatever she needs me to do, just, I really want to help her win, and I think we have a really good shot. It seemed he was maturing and was looking to see if there was a possible future between him and DM. They did pretty well in the first two challenges. <laughs> But in episode two, DM wasn't feeling well. DM would stay home while everyone went to watch the elimination. When they came back, DM was looking much better. CT said he would stay behind while everyone went out to the club, but DM told him to go. I'll give her her space, but you can't help worry about her. When everyone got back to the challenge house, a producer pulled CT aside and told him that DM was taken to the hospital and CT went into panic mode. You want to talk, we can talk. We're leaving now. I'm leaving to her hospital right now. The producers were able to get DM on the phone to calm CT down. DM would come back to the challenge house. However, the next morning, DM wasn't feeling well at all. She was taken to the hospital again. You know, it's crossed my mind that DM may have more than a, a tummy ache. And if that's the case, I'll leave on the next flight with her. No questions asked. While waiting for her to come back, CT had everyone do crafting and write some nice messages for her on a welcome home package. But DM never made it back to the challenge house. Instead, TJ came to make a house call. He announced that DM was unable to continue in the game and was medically disqualified. CT started to pack his bags and wanted to be by DM's side, which he was. I'm realizing that no matter how organized your ducks are, Life can turn on two seconds. So you can't keep on waiting. Because if you keep on waiting, it's gone. But having a partner like CT with me gives me some sort of weird relief that I know somebody is in my corner. And that feels comforting. DM passed away on November 14th, 2014.
In season 27, Battle of the Bloodlines, we would see DM's younger sister Faith and CT come do a demonstration in the Too Clingy Daily Challenge as a tribute to DM. So, in memory of DM. We put our heart into everything she did, especially these challenges. We're expecting you guys to do the same today. So, do it, do it for, for D. D. Then in season 29, Invasion of the Champions, the night before the finals, the players were taking part in a Thailand tradition called Krathong, which in 2016, fell on November 14th. This was CT's first season back on the show since Battle of the X's 2 and his demonstration on Battle of the Bloodlines. And for him to come onto the season, make the finals, and to have this ceremony on this specific day was emotional for him. I have been carrying a heavy heart, say the least. I wasn't in a good place. I, I felt broken. I really didn't have much to, to live for. And this little kid, this little boy, you know, gave me a reason, gave me a purpose, you know, help me heal, help me uh, move forward. DM was a light. She has touched so many lives, whether it was through the challenge, her journalism, her blog, her charity, or if you were fortunate to meet her in real life. DM was a fighter, and through everything she did, she wanted everyone to know the fight is worth it. She dug deep, showing me, all of her fellow competitors, and eventually everybody in the world just how beautiful she really was. Well, DM won the challenge that day, cementing her position as the most inspirational person to ever touch this challenge.